On to the other crisis in our neighborhood, Sri Lanka. It is in disarray. The Rajapaksas are losing control and the streets of Sri Lanka are looking like a war zone. Take a look. What you saw were images from yesterday. A massive crowd gathered at Mahinda Rajapaksa's private residence. They were greeted with water cannons and tear gas. The crackdown did not deter the protesters. They're still on the streets and they're demanding the resignation of the brothers, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Yesterday, they seemed in control. Their entire cabinet, all 26 members, had resigned, presumably on the instructions of the brothers. That's how the world saw it. The Rajapaksa stayed on. The rest of the ministers had resigned. They rejigged a few ministries. They reached out to the opposition. They pitched a unity government, of course, with the Rajapaksas at the helm. That was the, uh, the offer that they made. And they came to power with brute majority in the last election, remember. Their party has two-thirds of seats in the parliament. In 24 hours, the tables have turned. The lawmakers are leaving the Rajapaksas in droves. The first setback came in the form of a resignation from this man, Ali Sabri. Yesterday, he was made the finance minister of Sri Lanka, handpicked by the Rajapaksas, promoted from the justice ministry to the finance ministry. 24 hours after taking oath, he has quit. You heard that right. Sri Lanka's new finance minister has quit within 24 hours. We've accessed a copy of his resignation. Apparently, he never wanted the, the post in the first place. And can you really blame him? Sri Lanka is battling its worst ever economic crisis. Who would want to be finance minister at a time like this? But I'll read from the resignation letter nonetheless. This is what he said. If your excellency wishes to appoint a person suitable to handle the situation from outside the current parliament, I am willing to step down from my parliamentary seat to enable your excellency to make such an appointment. The letter was addressed to the president. So like I said, Sri Lanka is going through its worst economic crisis. The finance minister has resigned. In fact, Ali Sabri's resignation was just the beginning. Setback number two, at least 41 lawmakers have withdrawn their support to the Rajapaksas. 41. They have walked out of the government. They've joined the op have they joined the opposition is the question. Well, not exactly. These 41 lawmakers say that they want to represent themselves independently. And this has serious implications for the Rajapaksas. The Sri Lankan parliament, let me tell you, has 225 seats. The magic number, as they call it, the majority mark is 113. The Rajapaksas had a clear majority before, 150 seats. The opposition had 75. Now, 41 lawmakers have left the government, which means the Rajapaksas have just 109 MPs. That's four less than the majority mark. The independent lawmakers can vote either way. Long story short, the Rajapaksa brothers now lead a minority government. The Sri Lankan parliament met today and that's where these 41 lawmakers announced their decision to become independents. So what next for the Rajapaksas? Will they lose power? Well, they could. Will there be a trust vote? There could be. There's a lot of buzz in Colombo right now. Sri Lankan media is reporting this. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa apparently spoke to some senior members of his party and he ruled out his resignation, but his brother, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa's position could be threatened. And I'll tell you why. In Sri Lanka, the people elect the president directly. And in turn, the president elects the prime minister. Whoever is chosen must command the confidence of the parliament. In other words, the prime minister will be chosen by the president, but the prime minister must also have majority support of the lawmakers. Now, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa does not have that anymore. He does not have that majority support. He's leading a minority government. So the opposition could potentially bring a resolution. They could defeat Mahinda Rajapaksa in the no-trust vote. They could force his brother, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, to pick a new prime minister. And that's a possibility that has crossed their mind. It seems Gotabaya Rajapaksa has discussed this with some senior lawmakers. He is said to have told them that he will hand over the government to anyone who can come up with a simple majority. The opposition also has a second option. Dissolve the parliament, call for a snap election. Will they do that though? At a time when people are going hungry, at a time when the country is out of essential supplies, from drugs to food items, they're running out of everything, when hospitals are on the verge of shutting down, when there is no fuel, and Sri Lanka is begging its neighbors for credit lines, will the focus shift to a power struggle? Will there be a new election?
It's hard to say. What's clear beyond doubt is the fact that the position of the Rajapaksa brothers is becoming more untenable by the day. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.